Mm -hmm. But then I'll tell you what, what we did, you see. So we now had a model where we could change muscle glycogen before the start of exercise. And we had found that it made no difference running at those distances. So I said, okay, well, let's now do a long, prolonged exercise so that the guys get out and cycle at 70% of the VO2 max or whatever, and they go for as long as they can. And we're going to have them start with more muscle glycogen or less muscle glycogen because they followed the diets. And then we're going to give them just enough glucose, just enough to make sure that the blood glucose doesn't fall. Not enough to modify the metabolism, just enough to keep their glucose normal. And I had worked this out because it became apparent to me that in all these studies of carbohydrate metabolism and muscle glycogen depletion, no one was worried about the blood glucose level. They just ignored it. And I noticed that a lot of the studies, the blood glucose levels were low, including in the famous Bergstrom study, which is the one on which the whole thing is based. They took people, they put them on a high carbohydrate diet, had them exercise for as long as they could. And they found that the more carbohydrate in the muscle, the longer you could last for. And they said, you see, therefore, it's all muscle glycogen. But what they ignored was that everyone became blood glucose levels dropped. They just ignored it. Mm. But the reality is up to 1939, the teaching in sports science was that hypoglycemia, a falling blood glucose, is what causes fatigue. Mm. And that was the model. And it was said it's a brain effect. How do I know this? Because it was written in German, two famous writers, Christensen and Hansen, but they published it in German and no one bothered to read the articles. So I had the articles translated by a friend of mine who's a German. And he translated the sections and there it said, what happens is when you take glucose, if you're, if you're tired, you take glucose and your performance goes up, it's just correcting your blood glucose level. It's got nothing to do with metabolism in the muscles, nothing at all. And they presented all the evidence for that. So that was the model. The model was falling blood glucose, your brain cuts in and says, I can't continue to exercise or my, your blood glucose is going to go low and the brain's going to be damaged. So you must stop exercising. Mm -hmm. And that's the logical solution. So as I was working through it, I noticed that there were some studies where minimum amounts of carbohydrate improved performance. It wasn't, you didn't have to take huge amounts. Yeah. So that was the experiment we did. And we've done the studies and they're about to be submitted in which we compared what must you do? Must you take carbohydrate during exercise or before exercise? And the key was that before exercise, the people every day were taking, let's say, 300 or 400 grams of carbohydrate more. And what effect did that have on performance? That's the question. And But during exercise, they only took 10 grams an hour. So they took 20 grams. During a two-hour experiment, they took 20 grams of carbohydrate. Now, everyone will tell you, oh, it's the 400 grams before exercise that makes a difference and not the 20 grams during exercise. Well, let's see what the results showed. Yeah, because that might bring some nice, exciting surprises.